Good morning and welcome everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to suggest a New Year's resolution. This is the wrong time to suggest it because you guys are the on town crowd. You know what's going to happen in about five minutes? <laughs> Six or seven people are going to scurry in through that door just before the gospel reading. So I, I think I'll say it again in announcement time about maybe your New Year's resolution is you don't leave at 10 o'clock. You arrive <laughs> at 10 o'clock. That's what people are doing. I know it. I know it. Anyway, for you people who are here on time, I am so delighted, and our opening hymn is on page one. If you would all please stand and join in singing verses one, two, four, and five. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say the psalm together. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace, till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do his service. For he shall deliver the poor to rise out of distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and here shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not known to humankind as it has now been revealed to the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints of Christ, and to make everyone see what is, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising 
and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and they paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, we are here today to offer you our sacrifice of worship. We are here to listen to your word, to bring to you the concerns of our hearts, and to join together in fellowship. Speak to us through scripture, hymns, prayer, and silence. Grant us ears to hear, hearts to listen, and lives prepared to do your will. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is another one of those favorite Sundays of mine. I am fascinated by Epiphany and how it's viewed today versus the reality of 2,000 years ago. Now, I'm not here to pop any bubbles, or ruin any of your Christmas traditions. But I think it's worth digging into this story. Like so many of the birth stories of Jesus, we have wrapped it all up in a really pretty bow and sanitized it and put it in bite-sized pieces as if the Hallmark Channel wrote the story. We have reduced it to three men, presumably very wise, showing up to bring gifts to the baby Jesus on the heels of his birth, as almost sliding into home plate right after Mary has gotten done. (laughs) Now let's think about this for just a minute. Lots of interesting details right here before our very eyes that we have glossed over for decades and decades. The story of the Magi is only told in the Gospel of Matthew. And by the time they arrived, it says very clearly that they entered into a house to visit Jesus and his parents. That's such an interesting detail that we skip in our mind's eye. No more stable. Yet we always assume they are crowded outside one with their camels in tow, right? But no. At this time, Joseph and Mary have settled down in Bethlehem. They have not gone back to their home. And he's plying his trade as a carpenter there, no doubt. Jesus may well have been one or two years old when the Magi came to visit him. They had a proper house now, for sure. That word would not have been used if they were still in a day stable. 
Now we speak of three magi, but the scripture never says that there are three magi. Did you know that? We just all have become so accustomed to it. We believe that there are three of them. We think perhaps because there are three gifts mentioned that we have the thought that the Magi, being polite people, would have each brought the baby Jesus one gift. But oh no, that's not necessarily true, but yet a tradition has been born. They have traveled so very far, and they are indeed wealthy people, for who else could afford such extravagant gifts as gold, frankincense, and myrrh were worth fortunes in their day. They were traveling at night. Why? Because they were following a guiding star. The roads in ancient Israel were dangerous places in broad daylight. At night, bandits would have been waiting to prey upon three single wealthy men traveling. So these smart men would have been in a large caravan full of pack animals, tents, supplies, servants, and most importantly, security guards. So you see, there could have indeed been many magi and certainly dozens of caravan workers following that star for all we know. Notice I keep stressing the title magi. Well, they were astrologers, and that's basically the translation of magi. Not astrologers like we think of today with our horoscopes telling us what kind of day we're going to have or who we're going to meet and marry. They were from a priestly class of Persian and Babylonian experts in such arts as astrology and the interpretation of dreams. They were well-educated and respected, but they were not kings. Later tradition made them kings when the gospel was written and it interpreted the prophecies from the Psalm 72 that we just read and the prophet Isaiah that Blair read in the Old Testament that references kings coming to visit the newborn Messiah. Now the Magi have studied the heavens and something amazing has happened. A bright new star has appeared in the constellation associated with the Jews. These learned men wanting to discern the meaning of this astrological happening would begin to study the prophecies of the Jews. And yes, they would have even read the Hebrew Bible to help them discern just what was up. After some time, they would have read about a savior being born, a king for the Jews. So they decided to go and see for themselves. They traveled perhaps thousands of miles to see this new king of the Jews. And when they found him, they rejoiced. Wouldn't you if you had ridden a camel for a thousand miles? <laughs> the Magi changed their whole world so they could find this little baby. And they brought Jesus the very best gifts that they had to offer him. But isn't this so different from the way the world today acts when it comes to our Lord? We expect God to come looking for us to explain himself for the things that happen, to prove who he is, and we expect him to give us gifts. Imagine. We don't inconvenience ourselves to go and find him. And when we do give him gifts, it so often turns out to be the last or the least that we can give, attached with excuses and conditions. Wise people seek and worship Jesus today, not for what they can get, but for who he is. 
The Magi brought gifts and they worshiped Jesus for who he was. For me, this is the essence of what true worship is all about. Honoring Christ for who he is and being willing to give him what is valuable to us. After finding Jesus and worshiping him, the Magi were warned by God in a dream that they each had not to return to Jerusalem because Herod, the Roman installed king of the Jews, meant to use them to find this baby Jesus and to kill him. For me, scripture offers here one of the most simple and elegant metaphors when it says that the Magi left for their own country by another road. Isn't that what happens to all of us after we've had an encounter with Jesus? We change our direction in some way. A metaphor, beautiful in its simplicity. How I pray this would be for us all. In conclusion, I think we get so much of this story backwards. We come here to see a reenactment of a long ago event. We forget that the Magi came to see, honor, and worship Jesus. They didn't come to watch a show somehow detached from the action, just outside the stable peering in. The possible epiphany for us today, and not one I originated, is this. For many of us, and certainly in other parts of Christian tradition, when people think of worship service, they think of God as the director, the choir, the priest, the chalices and acolytes as the actors, and the congregation, you guys, as the audience, watching some kind of action go up on stage here. But I want everyone to leave here today with a new thought, if you haven't had it before. I want you to completely turn that list around. What if you think of the priest as the director? All of you, and I mean all of you. The entire congregation and choir, organist, chalicist, as actors in this worship drama. And who does that leave in the audience? Just one. God, let our worship individually and collectively be mindful of his attention on us. Amen. Amen. You would all please stand and turning to page six in your bulletin, join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the night. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, who through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen.
with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Bridgehampton and every community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and for the swift end of the war in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Anne and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand, everyone. <laughs> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Everyone, please have a seat. I am delighted to say that Coffee Hour is back after a two-week hiatus with all the crazy holiday falling on Sunday. Uh, we gave everybody with coffee hour a break, but I've missed the fellowship and, and it looks delicious over there. And so I hope you'll come over. Um, uh, the, the bathrooms are complete. The kitchen uh, work is complete. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, stop over and take a look. It looks great. Um, uh, and I hope that you will enjoy seeing that. I wanna point out in your bulletin that for Marines Haven, we have a full crew for Tuesday night. I'm super excited. Thank you all for signing up for this. Um, uh, it is such a wonderful uh, thing to have these people on these cold nights to come into our home, uh, our parish house, be warm, and to now have a hot shower too. 
Um, so thank you all for being a part of making that happen and for volunteering. We'll be back in February. Um, uh, Maureen's Haven will be back in two weeks because the folks from the Catholic Church come down and host it at our place. Um, so our showers are getting more and more use, which is a great thing. I, I love that. It makes me really happy. Um, this is Epiphany. Uh, this is our last uh, day or uh, celebration of Christmas. Uh, so right after this service, you would do us all a great favor if you would take a poinsettia home with you. They are beautiful, but they need to go somewhere, and I hate to see them get just thrown in the trash. So please take one uh, home and enjoy it, or take two, you, as many as you want. There's plenty of them. Uh, so please uh, uh, feel free. Don't push anybody when you're coming up to get them, but please take all you want. I have seen some aggressive action before on, on, the, on the getting of the flowers around here. Um, mark your calendar. January 29th is the annual meeting, um, uh, and that's an exciting day when we talk about not only what we accomplished in 2022, but we turn our eyes towards 2023 and beyond where St. Anne's is going, where we're being called uh, to by our, uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, we will have a luncheon following immediately after this service um, over in the parish house. And then we will have our meeting, which lasts about an hour. Um, your participation is vital. You'll be voting, be voting on new vestry people uh, to be joining the vestry for 2023, and they'll be on for three years. Um, and I also have a really happy surprise to share that day. So I hope uh, that you guys will come and be a part of that day, the 29th. That's coming up before we know it. Um, a lot of preparation is going into that for sure. For sure. We will be honoring our people that will be coming off of the vestry um, uh, at that time, including our senior warden, uh, Nicola Barbara, who's been a warden for the last two years. So I hope you'll be there. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Gracious God, we thank you for the bounty and of this wagon and all the wonderful things that have been brought today to be put in our blessing box. May each one of these items help nourish people who do not have enough to eat living in this affluent community. I pray that you will bless this to their use. And I thank you for the people who thought to bring it today and encourage more to bring next week. For this food always goes quickly and is such in such demand. All this in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error and to truth, out of sin and to righteousness, out of death and to life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
service continues with the post communion prayer, which is found on page, my goodness, 14, 14. 14 thank you, in your bulletin. If you would all please stand or kneel as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May he, by his incarnation, gathered into one things both earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. If you would please remain standing and join in singing in our closing hymn, on page 15.
cease to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.